perfect. Wonderful. Okay, great. All right. Well, hello, ladies. It is June 27th. I can't believe it's already going to be July. This is crazy how fast time is going by. But um, welcome. I'm excited. I'm Pastor Stella, Stella and I'm going to be doing a message on spiritual leadership. Come on. Everybody was called to be a leader. If you're like trying to run away from it, I'm sorry. <laughs> God is going to keep calling you until you pick up the phone. Okay. But everyone's been called to a leader. So it's good. Whether you're, you're leading in your home, you're leading at work, you're leading at, at church in church, right? You are called to be a leader. So we are going to talk about th that today. And I'm so excited. Okay. So let's start with, oh, I do have some scriptures. Let me give some scriptures out to you guys real quick. If you guys can claim them, you don't have to. It's whoever can. Um, Matthew 20, 28. Just gonna type it here. Okay. The next one is Matthew 20, 26. And then the next one is Acts 6 3. All right. And I believe that's it. Just those three. So if you guys can claim those, then we can get going. I just want to make sure. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. So let's go to um, the message. All right. So leaders are made. They're either, um, they're not born leaders. Okay. We're not born as leaders or like we, we can lead now. Right. We are either, um, we are come coming at through um out of adversity right where things have shaken up and um and so, well let me give you just an example okay when 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 the big pandemic happened you know um a lot of people fell down they fell down in fear they quit their jobs they lost their jobs they didn't get up and do anything they just stayed trapped in their house right um the leaders in that situation rose up okay the leaders got out of the house the leaders went out there and started shouting from the, the rooftops, started working even harder than they ever had before, started connecting with people like they never had before, right? Those, that's the difference, right? Of, of um, so you can be a, a still, you can become a leader through um, adversity, okay? That's what happens, the, the remnant rise up, okay? So, um, and then there's some that want to just get taught and they, they go and learn, they take leadership skills and they learn that way, okay? Um, so, Whatever direction that you come from, you're you're you weren't born with all of the leadership skills, but as you say yes and amen to God, He's going to give you those those what you need at the time that you need it. Okay, let's pray. Father God, I just thank you, Jesus. Lord, I thank you, Father, for your presence. I thank you, God, that you are so good to us. I thank you, Lord, um, for your mercy on us, God. I thank you, Jesus, that you are the greatest example of leadership. I thank you, Father, that you show us God how to love, how to lead how to launch, how to connect, how to be who you created us to be, Lord, even as imperfect as we are, that you take the broken pieces and you make us whole, God, and then you put us to work. Lord, you don't need us perfect. You just need us willing. So Jesus, we call you, God. We call your name. We ask you to take, take this call, take over, take over because we need you. We cannot do this without you. Holy Spirit, come in. Have your way. Let your will be done. And we ask you, Father God, just to um, remove any distractions right now in the name of Jesus. Anything, God, that would try to hinder this word from coming out. Thank you, Lord, for teaching us. Teaching us to be better, to, to lead, to um, be stronger, to acquire your strength and your capacity. We love you, Jesus. And it's in your precious name we pray. Amen. 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 So um, a good example of, of a leader, thank you, thank you guys. A good example of a leader is um, that was placed in spiritually in position was, um, was Joseph, right? In Genesis 37 to 45, right? People would, they would think his promotion and leadership would be a lucky call, right? They're like, oh, well, he, Je um, um, Joseph is just, he was placed in that position to, Go, let me, here, let me go to, I, went, I read that too fast. Let's go to Genesis 37. That's, a, that's the first book, Genesis 37 to 45. 
I have so many pages of notes on my desk right now and I'm kind of like all over the place. So sorry. <laughs> Where am I going? 37. Where is it? Thank you, Jesus. Bear with me, ladies. I'm so sorry. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so the story of Joseph. You guys know the story of Joseph, right? He gets um his brothers try to um do away with him. He ends up getting taken into um the the camp, we you know e Egyptian camp. He ends up going into the 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 castle, right? He ends up being the right hand of um of the the pharaoh right and so he goes from this place of where oh, they were trying to kill him they're trying to get rid of him where they sold him into slavery and he ends up getting into this 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 palace and you would look at that and think wow like that's that's amazing that's what we want we want to have that we want to go from the pit to the palace right um and you would think that it, it was just a lucky move right it was a lucky move that he he got that and i want to be like that person right but nobody saw the process it took for him to get there right some people a lot of people see the promise of somebody oh how, how are they on that stage how are they having all these blessings how are they doing these and walking in this favor right i want that i want that but people didn't see the work and the process it took to get there right they just want what they see but they don't want the process right i'll tell you right now the process that we went through people don't want the process that we went through right people are not going to want the process that you went through right but there had to be a process, right? But through the process, it wasn't just an empty, you know, like just figure this out and we got you, right? This is God training him spiritually, right? To to be, to get to this place. God trained Pastor Kyle and I for a long time to get to the, to have a church right now, okay? To have be able to do the things that we're doing right now. We we were trained spiritually. God led us, right? And it, and we let him right? We didn't say no. You know, if you guys know that the, the story of, of kingdom culture women, it's a yes and amen. Yes and amen. It was a lot of yes and amen through gritted teeth, through nerves, through like fear and all those things, but it was still yes and amen. And we let God pour through us, right? So each person should pray and seek to have that, um, that Christ likeness in their personality, like Joseph had, right? Where he just, he was, he was willing he was willing. He took on that role and he was willing to do it. Right. But he was willing to let God teach him. Um, it doesn't look the same as like a natural promotion, right? God, you, who knows that God will promote you way differently than the world will, right? Cause the world can call you what, what it wants. The world can take away things can, but God will always multiply for you as long as you believe him and, and follow him. Right. So there are a lot of negative things. There's a lot of negative things when it comes to spiritual leadership you know, to be a leader, you have to be willing to be led. You know, he was willing to be led by the king, right? We have to be willing to be led by our king. God, we have to let God lead us. We got to honor authority. We have to honor the spiritual authority that God puts in our life to lead us, right? If I kept telling my leaders, no, no, I don't want to do that. No, like what, where would I be? I'd be stagnant. I'd be alone, right? I'd be isolated. And that's exactly the result that you get, right? So, but when you, when you are led, then you can lead. Not one person can lead something without being led. The ones that try to go out and, and, you know, be rogue and try to, you know, lead their own life and lead to their own thing. And I'm just gonna do it my way there. You, you won't make it. There is no success. Not one person, not, you know, if you talk to millionaires in, in business, okay trillionaires business billionaires in business they'll tell you the same thing they had to have a mentor they had to be taught they had to get humble right it wasn't about them like let me just run to the top and step on everybody right those people that did that still had to be led they still had to have a leader to guide them okay so we have to be willing we have to shake off the negative elements that come with with being a leader OK, whether it's a leader in the church, leader in your home, leader at your workplace, like I just mentioned earlier. Right. You have to shake off those elements, those negative elements, because if you don't, they will take you over because the enemy does not want you to lead because he wants you still. He wants you complaining. He wants you whining. He wants you in your orphan spirit. He wants you to be alone. OK, he doesn't want because he knows if, if you take on the responsibility and you run with what God has for you, you're fulfilling God's purpose for your, for, you know, the, the plan for your life, 
and you're going to do great things. So why would the enemy want you to do that? So he's going to come in and steal, kill and destroy. It's really sad, right? When we, you know, I, I know being in the ministry for many years, you know, how we've seen people come in and they shoot their own foot, right? They, they quit the opportunity because of offense, offense, because of, um, they, they leaned in right to the enemy and they allow the enemy to whisper into their ear. So in that one decision that they get offended, they, they lose all the opportunity that God had for them. Right. We've seen it time and time again. Right. Not in just our church, but in other minute in our other ministries that we've had. And um, if you're not being led, if you're not listening to the Holy Spirit, then it's easy to do it. You know, um, we must not be overly sensitive and defensive when we're criticized. Who knows? It's hard to um, to receive criticism. Anybody agree with that? It's hard to receive criticism. It's hard to be critiqued. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's very hard, but we cannot be overly sensitive. We cannot be overly like, oh my gosh, they did this. I, you know, and then assume things, create stories, take a side. Listen, Jesus did not come to take sides. Jesus came to take over and you represent him. So we don't take a side, left or side B. We say, what does God say? And let me run, right? So we have to be willing to put the stuff to the side so that we do not um, uh, get taken out by the, by, by the defense or the offenses that come our way, right? We must not make excuses for failure. Listen, just take accountability. Say, yep, that was me. Yep, I messed up on that. Yep, okay, what can I do better, right? Rather than say, well, it happened because this and this, it's their fault, right? We, ha we can't blame others for the mistakes that we make. We have to take accountability and then we have to rise up. That's it. Because you're, listen, when it comes to leadership and success, you are going to fail, OK, it, it's part of the equation. I'm sorry. It's part of the equation, but that's how you learn. Right. If you keep running to the top and you're not failing at all, then there's going to be a time when you, there's a crash that happens. OK, so you should be failing as you go. But every time you fail, you're failing forward. You're not failing backwards. OK, because failing forward means that you're still moving. You're still moving your feet. Right. So and we must not be intolerant. Right. We must um, we must not be inflexible. Listen, with any type of leadership, you must be willing to be flexible. Right. Like in I'll, I'll use ministry because that's where we come from in, in our in the church. We have to be flexible with the position. One day you can be in children's ministry. One day you can be in the coffee shop. Right. It's all about the flexibility of what God needs from you at that time. We must not be dis disturbed by people um, being less than perfect. Oh, my goodness. That happens a lot. You know, we, we act like we're so offended and like upset when people become you know people become who they are or they they operate in the flesh that they are people are people you know um we've had a family that left because they were completely offended by another family right and and you're you're offended because you think you're coming to a perfect church there is not one church that's perfect okay listen if you find a perfect church you're gonna ruin it okay because not one of us is perfect, right? Let's be real. I'm going to speak truth to you because we're trying to think, oh, well, they should all treat me like this. They should do this to me. They should hold my, my water like this. They should greet me like this. They should play the music like this. They should do this and do this and do this. And you're creating all of these things. And when somebody makes a mistake, then it becomes the end of the world, right? Listen, the church is not perfect. The only one that's perfect is God. So be willing to not be so disturbed by people who are being people. Okay. Um, in Matthew 20, 28, did, I, did somebody say they're going to take that? Yeah. Quinn, Matthew 20, 28. Yes. Sorry. I thought I was okay. on mute. Oh, okay. it's okay. Even as the son of man came not to be mis ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a reason for many come on amen so he did not come to be served but to serve right he came not come to be to be served but to serve you know and if you think about that when they were in the, the room and he's he's washing their feet he says i'm going to wash your feet and they're saying no lord no lord and and he's like yes i'm going to do it like how amazing is that right the king of kings lord of lords washing your feet right and yet we are too big to do certain things to serve, right? It just makes you think and makes you, you know, realize, wow, okay, God, like, who am I? I need to humble myself, right? Um, leaders should be able to keep things to themselves, 
right? How many times have things been brought to your attention and you should have kept it to yourself? God said, don't say anything. And you did, right? So we should be able to keep things to, our, to ourselves, right? And God will uh, will direct us with what to do with it, right? We should be able to yield to someone else um, that has a better idea. We always say this in our, in our, um, in our group, in our leadership team, you know, Hey, bring an idea to the table, bring an idea. If, if, um, and fight for it. If the idea does not get chosen, something else gets chosen, then lay it down, right? Don't get angry. Don't get offended. Just lay it down. Say, okay, that didn't get chosen, right? Don't create extra conversations outside of the, the, the conversation that it was, that was meant for that, right? Many people will go into a meeting and they'll, they'll say, okay, share what you, what you need to express right now. And then people won't share, right? Cause they're offended. So then they leave the meeting and they share it with everybody else. Right. So what do they just do? They just said treason. We call it treason in the church, right? It's called betrayal. So bring it to the attention now. And um, if it doesn't get chosen, if your ideas don't get chosen, then you, then you lay it down and go to the next, but get over it. Right. We have to get over it. If we don't, and listen, I'm saying really strong words right now because we are, we're called to be leaders and that's what leaders do. Leaders rise up. We don't sit on the mat. We don't sit down and, and whimper and whine. We, and complain about things. We, we get things done right? Um, Jenison Franklin, I love that he shared it. He's like, leaders get results, right? Leaders get results. Let me go, let me share this because this was, I was so good. I was listening to this this morning, but um, there's a lot of times that we, we can, we give people titles too soon. Okay. In the church and at work. Okay. So don't think that like, well, you're talking about me. I'm not talking about you. Okay. I'm talking about in general. Okay. At your workplace, I'm sure that you can notice some people in your in your workplace that you're like, they, how are they a manager? <laughs> how are they a leader? How in the world, right? Um, same thing with church, same thing with, you know, um, other places that you go to, right? The grocery store. There's just people that have received a title too soon. And let me tell you this right now. In leadership, titles mean nothing, right? That's why we don't like to give, we we don't like to give titles. We we just it drives us crazy because some people get receive the title and then they it it takes over everything so it becomes who they are and it, then they lose everything right it just it's not the right thing so titles mean nothing okay what you do with a title means everything what you do right it's the action it's not the 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 what you're saying that who what you are right like what 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 is yielding results right um the action is what what provides the results of the leader you know that they're a leader by their fruits. You know that they're a leader by the things that they're doing, the things that they're accomplishing, the results, the communication, the gathering, right? The the working together, the team teamwork, the, that, that's leadership, right? People that run off and do their own thing, that create their own things, that's not leadership, okay? That's power control. That's being power hungry, right? You're not communicating. A true leader is measured by the results, right? Leadership is measured by the results. Leadership is determined by the fruitfulness. Come on. Leadership is determined by fruitfulness. Leaders have the ability to produce fruit, right? Leaders have the ability to produce fruit. All right. Let's take it back. So I loved, I loved hearing that. Being full of the spirit has the power to change the atmosphere around you. It's the influence that makes Christ real to others, right? So when you have Holy Spirit in you, that's why when people bring things to me, you know, um, I, I sit in the presence. I want to be in the presence of God at all times. I want to, I want to be able to listen to him and I want to hear him. That way, when people bring things to me, I can see immediately if it's flesh. Oh, that's just feelings. Okay. Feelings are liars, <laughs> right? I'm sorry. At least I'm laughing when I say it. Feelings are liars. Okay. You can't like, you can't, they, they, they are deceiving. Okay. You cannot have your feelings go and, and go try to create something, you know, it, cause it's a liar. Every time you got to say, Lord, um, I, I, re I repent of my feelings right now. And you tell me, what am I supposed to, what am I supposed to do? Say, act or think, right? Ask God, go to the spirit, go to the Holy spirit and say, fill me up. I want to have wisdom. I want to have clarity guide me. Right. Because what you have in you is going to produce, right produce results right so it's either going to be bad results or good results if you're in the flesh it's going to be bad results bad results right is turmoil is chaos okay good when you're in the spirit then you're going to produce right the fruit and you're saying all right teamwork let's work together let's lead let's we're going to be solution focused and not 
problem focused, right? A lot of the times when things happen around us, we tend to focus on the problem, right? That's in the flesh, but the, the leaders focus on the solution. So a problem comes to me and I'm like, okay, what can we do about it? What can we do? Uh, 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 I'm thinking, okay, Lord, what do we got to do? What do we got to do? Right. Rather than I can't believe that happened. I can't believe it's done. It's over. I'm not, I can't handle this. Right. Right. You got to be solution focused. And listen, all these things I'm sharing with you, these are a shift in the mindset. Okay. So it's a process. <laughs> Don't feel like you got to be this way. We have been in leadership training for many, many years. Okay. So it's, you know, we, we had to shift our mindset early on. Right. And that's what, how he trained us to where we're at right now. Um, if deacons are called to be spirit led and spirit filled, all those who lead, teach the word of God should be too. Okay. So if people are, are, are um, in a church and they're, they're being called, like they should be spirit filled. Anybody who's in a church that teaches the word of God, right. Or in a call like this, right. If you're teaching on a call like this, if you're teaching in a, in a, um, one of our classes that we teach discipleship classes, you should be spirit filled, right? Because whatever you have, you're going to give, right? Spiritual goals can be achieved only by spiritual people who use spiritual methods. I don't want, uh, this is what I do. When people bring their stuff to me. I say, do you pray first? Did you pray first before you bring me your offense? And they'll say, well, I mean, uh, yeah, you know, they'll try to skirt around it, <laughs> but I know, cause I know, cause I know the tone that they're coming at me. I know that you know, I, I, I feel the flesh, I see the spirit, you know, so that's why I say, Hey, it's okay. It's okay to be emotional. It's okay. Cause we're all emotional. We're women. <laughs> Let's be real ladies. Okay. We're going to be emotional, but take a moment, sit down, go spend time with God and say, God, I need you to calm my nerves. God, I need you to remove anxiety from me right now. And I need to, I need to think spiritually. How do I think spiritually? Right. Tell me Lord. So that's what we got to do is we gotta go to the king, go to the throne room, spend time with him, right? You got to shift your secular mind to the heart of God, right? All right. Matthew 20, 26. Does somebody claim that one? Yes, Gwen. Go ahead. Matthew 20, 26. But it shall not be so among you, but whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister. Amen. Amen. That's right. So whoever wants to lead you must be a servant, right? You know, like, um, I know if you talk about bosses, we'll talk about bosses at your workplace, right? You're like, how are they just sitting there and not doing anything? They're not doing anything and I'm doing all of it, right? Have you guys felt like that, <laughs> right? Because many will think that the title gives them that, uh, that, that right to not do anything, right? But the ones who are leaders are the ones who are running, no matter what position you give me, I'm going to run and do it excellently. You want me to clean the bathroom? I'm going to clean it excellently. Okay. And I'm not going to be mad because I'm cleaning the bathroom when I want to be on stage. You know what I mean? Like, what do you want? Do you want, do you want recognition from man or do you want recognition from God? Right. So in Acts 6, 3, go ahead, Marguerite. Sorry. It's always hard to find that button, right? <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so this may be a little bit of a different version, but 6.3 is um, brothers choose seven men from among you who are known to be full of the spirit and wisdom. Uh, we will turn this responsibility over to them. Amen. Amen. We will turn over this. We will give them this responsibility, right? So let me hear from you. I'm going to stop mid mid message real quick. And I want to hear from you. What has been your biggest struggle? Whoever wants to share this. What has been your biggest struggle with, with what I've discussed today? What I've discussed so far. I want to kind of meet in the middle when it comes to um, either being a, a servant, you know, in a leadership role, right? You're like, How, didn't know I was supposed to be a servant like this. You know, um, can anybody share a challenge that they've had? You know, whether you've been critiqued whether you've been uh, disturbed by other people not being perfect. Um, what was the other, other thing? We well, you know whether it was a uh, offense of not being able to get your, your point or your ideas across, you know, was there anything that you struggled with in that area that now hearing it, that it makes more sense? 
I could share a little bit something okay. really quick. Um, so I was just always afraid of being asked a question and not knowing the answer. Mm -hmm. But so <laughs> I, I shared this recently that um, I started serving and I started serving because I, I um, gave some information to a, a person at church and, and he took that information and he rededicated himself. So I was like, okay, <laughs> that was easy. Like I really didn't have to do much. So what am I doing and what am I waiting for? So mm -hmm. that, that was like a wake up call and um, God just saying like, Hey, wake up. Um, this is what I want you to do. So you need to start doing this. So <laughs> just listen, listen and, and go with it. Like, don't, don't stall. There's no reason to stall, you know, to wanting to serve, serve, serve God, you know? So right. I, I'm loving it. It was my second week doing it last week. And it's just a, such a blessing. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I love it. And, and being willing to, to be taught, right? Because that, that's when we grow is that when we're being will, we're willing to let God lead us, right? Coming in and saying, I don't know everything, God. And I'm shaking in my boots and I'm so nervous. My voice is cracking, but I just want to do what you say. Right. And when you do that, that's when God teaches you. Okay. Um, sure. Kyle and I have always been go-getters, right? We've always been, we run, you know, I'm probably, probably more me than him. <laughs> because <laughs> I'm like, let's go, babe. <laughs> and like all these ideas and everything going, you know, and I, I had to learn um, how to be still. I had to learn to honor authority because I want to run and I want to go and do all these things, but I have to learn to fall under the authority and, um, and do everything in order. Right. I had to learn those things. And I had to learn that even though I'm, even though I'm solution based, ready to run that through that process, because of that, I will have haters, right? We will have haters when you're doing the things for the kingdom, right? But that doesn't let um, slow you down. You keep going as long as you're honoring along the way. You know, um, I'm excited for you, Marguerite. It's just the beginning. You're going to do some great things um, on yeah, your walk. I, was, so. I, got a, I got a little scared because um, this couple came up to me uh, and I, you know, I didn't know them and they started asking me questions and I was like, oh my God, what do I do? What do I do? <laughs> I but it. I was like, all they're asking is, you know, simple, easy questions. I'm like, stop, you're okay. You got this. And I answered yeah. their questions and they were on their way. And I was like, okay, that wasn't bad. <laughs> I was so scared for Duffy. <laughs> I love it. That's it. You know, because be willing to say, I don't know. Let me find out. Right. Even if they do ask you those questions where you're like, I have no idea what I'm doing. Be willing to to say that. Like, let me find out for you. Because our natural human response is like, you know, like, oh my gosh, I'm I'm looking like I don't know what I'm talking about and doing, right? And then we start getting into that that weird place. But praise God that you just you jumped in there, jump in there because that's when you're gonna learn, right? When you go on your first day of work anywhere, you're gonna um you're gonna learn. You don't know what you're doing the first day of work, but over time you're gonna get it, right? And the same thing with the kingdom of heaven. God is gonna do it. He's gonna, he's 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 amazing because he's the one that you answer to, right? I love it. We had a gal last night. I just, I think I, I mentioned it earlier on the call, but um, sweet, sweet woman in our church. She's amazing. She's such a beautiful gal and she's so shy. She's so shy. She goes, pastor, I have a gal that I want to bring, you know, and she's, I can just, she's just so nervous, but she did it. She brought her over and look at this gal came and got delivered and got saved. Come on in Jesus name. Thank you, Lord. That's all it takes. And I love that you said that, right? You shared something and, and look at what happens, right? He's now this, I think he still sent, we're talking about the same person. I think he still sends scriptures to Pastor Kyle. So. <laughs> oh, nice. That's awesome. Yeah, he sends so. them to me too every morning. I was like, and if he doesn't send them by a specific time, I'm like sending him something like, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. See, yeah, the little sure. seeds you plant, they grow. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to switch so over now into um, some things. I want to talk to you guys about trust because in leadership, this is a big, big deal, right? Trust. You're like, how do you trust somebody to, to, to lead you? Or how do you trust somebody that you, that you need to lead, right? How does trust work? How is it partnered? How do we navigate through it? Okay. So I'm going to show you we guys some four cores of trust, four cores of trust. Okay. The number one core of trust is truth. 
truth. Are you a credible witness? Right? This is a really big deal when you're in ministry, right? Are you credible? Are you credible to what you're saying? Are you becoming, are you two different people? Right? Um, when you when you're at church and when you're at home, like are you, do you walk with integrity? Do you say what or do you do what you say you're gonna do? Right? Do you um and let these just things just this kind of pour in through you and let it hey if there's conviction good we need conviction if we're not convicted then we're not we're not breathing right we should be convicted right but are you open and transparent or do you hide truth do you hide things to to appear one way right we should be in Christ all the truth all the time all the truth all the time right communication is big are we communicating? That's still under the four, the, the core of truth, communication. We have to communicate. We don't hold things back, but we don't communicate in a uh, conniving way, right? Like, I, like I'll get um, people that will that will call and say, hey, I need to confess I was offended. And I say, okay, awesome. And they'll come and they'll confess and they'll confess all these things that they were offended by me, uh, right? Or at, at whatever time of the season it was. And they'll, they'll say it and then I was like, oh, but I'm better now. I just feel so much better. I just need to get it off my chest. <laughs> so you weren't offended, but you just wanted to make sure that you you said that, right? You were, you were good, but then you had to say it out loud. You had to just, you still had to repeat it, right? There's a difference between confessing to confess to free yourself and then confessing just to take one more hit at somebody. Does that make sense? One more hit at somebody to, to, to make them feel bad, right? Like, do you really need to say it, right? Take responsibility, right? You got to take responsibility for what you do and what you say and what, you know, if you don't show up, take responsibility. I'm so sorry. I didn't make it. I'm so sorry. I didn't answer your phone call. Sorry. I've been busy. Right. We lose trust when we lie. Right. I mean, hello. It's a, it's a commandment, right? Thou shall not lie. Right. And um, yet we're, it's sometimes once you start lying, it's an easy path to continue going down over and over again. Right. But you lose trust when you lie. Number two, the intent, intent, right? We are a kingdom people. We are, we live kingdom. So what is your agenda? What is your intention? What are you trying to get at? What's the motive of what you're doing, right? What's the motive? Is the motive to make others feel bad and you look good? Is the motive to, to lift your name up high, to get on the stage? Is your motive to, is your, is your agenda to cause division? Is your agenda to create division when there is no division? What is your agenda as, you know, if we're supposed to be a kingdom people, right? Write that down. Explain why, right? What, explain what your, what your agenda is, right? Um, when you, when you minister to someone, you will focus your growth to their growth and you will grow faster, right? So you will focus your growth. So in ministry, in your, your, if you're like, I don't have a ministry, your family is your first ministry. Okay. Uh, your workplace is your ministry, wherever you're going, where you speak. Where you talk about Jesus, where you're leading and you're showing by example, Holy Spirit's in you, right? So you should be um, focusing your growth to their growth, and then you will grow faster. You, they should be growing as you're growing, right? Because you're you're growing, that means you're pouring out so they can grow. Okay. Number three, being capable. Being capable. Admit when you're not capable. Admit when you need help. Say something. So many times, you know. Um, I won't go there. Okay. Number four, results, results. Nothing establishes trust like results, right? Like I said earlier, a true leader produces results. Okay. Somebody can say that they're a leader all they want. They can do, they can put the clothes on, they can get the props, they can get all the things that they need, but the true leader produces results. You will see results. You will see fruit. You will see things moving. You will see things growing. There will be things going on, right? So there has to be results. Yeah, let people know if you can't do it. If you're like, hey, you know what? I can't do it. But but let them know if you're just trying to, if you're just quitting because you just want to quit or you really like have no capacity, right? So those are the four cores of trust. I'm going to move on to the five waves of trust, okay? Five waves of trust. This is really important when it comes to, to leadership. Um, the five waves of trust. Number one, we have to self-trust. Okay. Self-trust. So there's a time when you, when you just have to step out in faith. Can anybody say amen to that? Like stepping out of faith, like Marguerite said that, right? She's stepping out of faith. I know our sister Perla, 
I think this is our Perla, uh, our Perla, um, I forgot your last name <laughs> already. Oh my gosh. But she's do, doing the Spanish call. She joined the Spanish call team. There's a couple Perlas. That's why I said that. So I want to make sure that was a Perla that's speaking on the KCW tomorrow. But um, she's been, she got invited to speak on the, on a Spanish call. She's been one of our teachers there. Right. And that's a stepping out in faith on her part. Right. Um, what is it, you know, um, that you're stepping out in faith for? You know, sometimes you just got to do it, right? If I would have stayed in my comfort zone and my little bubble of safety, I would never be work here today, right? I'd be afraid, not doing anything, just working my regular job, not doing anything, right? But I stepped out in faith so many times and God has given me so many opportunities throughout, you know, um, this time that I've been here, you know, so you got to step out in faith. I will encourage you and I will, I will um, let, like suggest, <laughs> Step out in faith. What is holding you back? Rebuke it and jump out. Rebuke it and jump out, right? So you got to start believing in yourself. Credibility is to believe. Credibility is to believe. You got to start believing in yourself, believing that you are who God created you to be, right? Um, always be prepared for people, right? But there's you know, the enemy wants you to be by yourself, isolated away from people, but that's not what God said. God called you to be in community, he called you to be, and this is important for you to know that in leadership is you, you're going to be surrounded by people. God is calling you to lead an army, right? And, and the fact that you're staying in a place of like a smallness right now, it's because you're afraid to do it. But once you break the, sh the, the glass, shatter the glass, you will go see all the people that God has sent for you. He's going to bring people to you, right? He's waiting for you to say yes and amen. All right. Praying opens up heaven and blesses the, blessing the, uh, blesses the people, okay? Whenever you pray, you got to pray. You got to lift up those prayers because that's what's going to open heaven, bring heaven down to you so that you can be in the spirit and you can operate and answer and navigate in the spirit, right? You have to be in prayer at all times to lead any any area in your life. You have to be in the, in, in the spirit. And it's okay to make mistakes. You got to build trust in Christ in you. You got to establish boundaries in your life. Okay. Boundaries is number one. Okay. You need boundaries with people. Not everybody has access to you. Not everybody has to know you all your business, right? But you need to get in front of people. You need to get in front of people. Okay. Number two, the uh, second wave of trust is relationship trust, right? So we just had self-trust. Now we have relationship trust. The easiest people to be around are those that are consistent. Who knows that? You know how they're going to be. You know that they're going to, they're going to, they're going to do what they say they're going to do. They're going to um, treat you this way. They're going to do this. But the, the ones who are not consistent where you don't know what you're going to get, like what, what, what personality am I getting today? Are they going to be, am I going to have to walk on eggshells around them today? Or are they going to be the fun one today? Are they going to be the, the reasonable one today? Or are they going to be the angry one today? What are we looking at? Right. The easiest people to be around are the ones that are consistent. So we need to be consistent, be consistent in who you are. And if you're in your word, in your prayer time, in your prayer closet with God, and you are wiping away all those fears, wiping away all those doubts, being washed clean of all those negative thinking, right? The stinking thinking, you know, then you're going to be able to operate and be a consistent person, right? But if we're not, then we will be all over the place. Number three, organizational trust. Don't talk about teammates to other teammates, people on your team at work, people on in your team, your home team, right? People at, at church, whatever it is in your area, your circle uh, that you you are with, don't talk about them to other people, right? And then call it, call it a uh, ministry, right? It's gossip. It's gossip. Okay. Don't do it. It will backfire. It always comes out. People try to go and um, look at, look at, I'll just, I'll use my example because we're pastors, right? So there's a lot of chatter that goes around. It always comes back to us. God always brings it to us. Okay. We always hear it. It's never hidden. Right. And that's because the truth always comes out and, and the lies will always be exposed because the enemy will always be exposed. Okay. And, um, so it will always backfire. So don't do it. Take it up, take it up, take it to your spouse, take it to your, your boss, take it to your pastor, whatever, whatever area of influence that, that, that is coming from, take it to the leader in that position and bring it to them and don't give it to the people on the side. Don't discuss it any further. Cause when I, I, my pastor always said, if you gossip, if you give somebody something, then you hate them. Right. Cause gossip is a sin. Gossip is a sin. Offense is a sin. 
Okay. So we want to steer away from those things, right? It's hard because, you know, I, I grew up in this, like I grew up in this, you know, of talking and sharing and all this stuff. And God had to just silence my mouth. Don't do it. Don't do it. Right. So you can do it. You can, you can be strong and not go that way. Okay. You can rise above it as a leader. You can rise above it. Right. And as a leader, and when people bring things to you, you can say, no, no, I'm not talking about that. Did you go to them? Did you go directly to them? Did you say it to them? Right. And I'll say this too, as a part, as a leader, expect the best from people. Don't expect the worst. Assume the best from people. Don't assume the worst, right? We too many times we tend to assume the worst and create stories and say, well, they did this, or we, we jump into an offense that someone else has and we partner with it when it had nothing to do with you, right? And so we have to make sure that we are not clinging because that's the enemy's plan. He, okay, he has them, they're gone. He's gonna come after you. Are they going to fall into it? Are they going to rise above it as a leader and say, nope, that didn't happen to me, but I'm going to pray for you that you guys get that, you know, fix reconciled, but I'm not going to be a part of that. Right. If you're not a part of the problem, you can't be a part of the solution. Right. All right. The fourth wave of trust is market trust. How other people see us, how are we viewed as, as a, a ministry, as a family? What do, how do people view us? as a, a teammate at work, what is it? Um, it's always about the team, right? The, all, the enemy is always trying to break a link. He's going to find a link in that chain to find one little link and, and break it off, right? And little by little, unless it gets stopped, it'll keep going, right? But rebellion is witchcraft. Anything that goes against the design of God, against um, you know, what God is doing, it's, it's, it's rebellion, which is witchcraft, right? Um, how I would never talk bad about a church. I would never talk bad about a ministry, another pastor, like you better be ready to face God because he put everybody in authority, right? Whether you agree with them or not, don't be caught up in that wind, right? Because rebellion is witchcraft. You got to be careful, be careful with that. It's a, it's a link in a chain that the enemy will use to destroy, right? And it will backfire. Because God's will is always good. God's will is always victorious, right? Number five, this is uh, the fifth wave of trust is societal um, trust, societal trust, right? Contributing to the city. How can we help in the city? What can we do? How can we serve the city at any level, right? Uh, and without having to post it on social media that we're doing it, how about we just go serve the city, right? And when I say that, I mean like people who are taking selfies of them feeding the homeless and here I am, look at me, right? Like if you're capturing something to say, hey, this is what our ministry is doing. Come and join us, be a part of this. Well, that's good. But there's people that will seek that attention and say, here I am doing a good thing, right? Good things don't get you into heaven, okay? Um, it's, your, it's your heart. So I'm gonna end it right there. There's so many more things I can keep going and we can probably do like a, I might do a part two on Thursday since I'm speaking Thursday. Um, of, of spiritual leadership, but let me hear from you. I'm going to keep it on um, recording just because I think this is such a good discussion to have, you know, as far as spiritual leadership, what has been your struggles? Has any of this stuff um, helped you? Has it helped you with, with understanding, with seeing how, you know, these things can, can create chaos or create peace? You know, I want you guys to share. I'm going to pray real quick and then we'll go into discussion. Okay. Father God, I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for your presence. I thank you, Father, for this word. Lord God, I thank you, Lord, for always teaching us, always teaching us to be a better leader, to be a better parent, a friend, a sibling, Lord God, a minister, a pastor, Lord God. I thank you, God, that you um, you always give us the tools that we need. You always give us the resources. And I pray, God, that, that we have ears to hear. We have ears to hear, eyes to see, Lord, your word, your truth, not our opinions, not our own thoughts, God, not operate in our feelings or our offenses. I pray, Lord, that we would just receive um, what has stood out to us today, what you have called us to do, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, and we praise you and we honor your holy name. You are so mighty, God, and we thank you, God, for, for giving us so many chances, Lord God, to come back and, and redo things over and again, God, because you give us so much grace. So we thank you. We love you, Jesus. And we honor you. We praise your holy name. In Jesus name we pray. Amen.
Amen. Amen. All right, ladies, who wants to jump in first? I want to hear from you. What stood out to you? What helped you? What shocked you? What surprised you? <laughs> Jump in, jump in. You first. I'll jump in first. There you go. <laughs> uh, when you were saying that a leader needs to be led first. Yes. Uh, yeah. And then you you said that some people can get offended uh, mm -hmm. with that. That yeah. used to be me. That used to be me because... Mm -hmm. I was like, I went to school for all this education, but yet my boss wants me cleaning toilets. Like, are you serious? Like, no, that's not me. I'm higher than that. I'm bigger than that. Mm -hmm. And throughout, I worked with her for over 15 years. And mm -hmm. every time she always sent me back to go do the restrooms, go do the restrooms. And one day I was like, you know what? I said, I've been with you for 10 years. I'm gone. Like, no, like you see me as somebody small. You see me as somebody who's not worth, you know, to help the company or anything. And she told me, you know what? She said, I think we need to have a talk. She said, let's go sit down. Mm -hmm. And she told me, you know, if you cannot clean a toilet, she said, how can you lead somebody to be a bigger and better person? Hmm. She said, how can you, if you're too good to clean a toilet, she said, wouldn't you be too good to work for anybody or to do any work? She said, that's how you should see it. She said, and I'm not doing it because I don't like you. Because I would get so offended that I even played the race card, you know, like, Oh, you yeah. see me as a Mexican, and that's what Mexicans do, you know? And she told me, she was like, no. She said, not only Mexicans do that. She said, a good leader is going to do everything that her employees do. What mm. you want them to do, you should be able to do. Right. Yeah. And she was like, I'm not belittling you. She said, I'm building. She said, there's a difference. She mm. said, and once you learn the difference, she said, you can come back. She said, and we can interview for a management position. She said, but first you need to know and learn how to be a leader before you can lead anybody. Mm. And I was like, wow. And like that stood to me like all these years. And then now I keep hearing it. Like now that I'm like, with God and my life has changed and I'm like oh my gosh like she's always told me this she's always installed this into me and now like now I hear it and I'm like I understand it you know I know it now now you know it's clear to me now what she was doing but the enemy had me in my offense, you know, like, mm -hmm. oh, she doesn't think you're good enough. And look at all your education. But it's true because no matter how much thousands of dollars in college I paid, they never taught me yeah. the meaning or the core of leadership. That's right. And now it's just like, ah, I understand it now. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. I love that. Cause you know, it's, it's true. Here's something I'll add to that. And had you communicated that to her sooner, she could have told you that right sooner too. Right. Cause communication is key, you know, and, um, because you have every right to say, you know, Hey, I've been here a long time. You know, why am I doing that? Cause it's all about the agenda, right? What's the agenda. If the agenda and the motive is in the right place, you know, but had we have, will we confront in love with the right agenda? We can do it much sooner now, you know? So, so people now, as you're, as you're facing things, you know, as you're learning these things is you can come in with that. Okay. What's the agenda? What am I, what am I wanting from this? What am I getting? Who, you know, who am I? I'm in Christ. Okay. You know, and going into that place and say, all right, my heart's in the right place. Now, let me ask you and be willing to hear it. You know, I love that. I love that. She said that, that, you know, 
if you're not willing to clean a toilet, right? Are we willing to do what we think is not good enough for us, right? Because we are. What we do, other people will do. And what we're doing, we're teaching others, right? So true. That's why leadership is so important. Thank you for sharing that. Powerful. Anybody else? Hi. Um, when yeah. That is an amazing testimony. And as you were speaking, it reminded me um, when Jesus was going to wash the disciples feet. And they're like, you know, they recognize who he is. So they're obviously like, oh, my gosh, like, no, Lord, no, you cannot. And, you know, isn't it beautiful that he modeled that, you know, that even though you are the biggest, you've got to be the smallest also, you know, to, to, to be able, like he said, for even the son of God came to serve, not to be served. And I often, I often ask myself the question, who am I, who am I that I think that I, wait, that, that, that I don't deserve, you know, to go through this. When and then I look and, and see people in the Bible and even Jesus and he went through it. And then you know it just fills me with encouragement that you know we gotta be prepared to go through the lowest so that we can prove, you know, that we that we are ready for bigger jobs, for bigger things. Um, so that is amazing that you had the opportunity to learn that. Um, other things that stood up to me was conviction is good. And just the fact that there is one thing that I have learned through this um, journey of, of my faith in the last couple of years, there is freedom in conviction, you know, and we just tend to, or I tend to like be convicted and just feel like down, like let it bring me down. But the Lord has showed me like, no, there is freedom in that conviction, you know, and, and I want you to experience it so that you can move on to the next thing. Um, so I think that is one of like my, my testimonies that I have, like as far as been invited to talk on, uh, to teach. I, when I, I was first invited, I said, you know, I, I did ask God and I felt like he said, no, this is not the time. But there was a lot of conviction in me in, in thinking, am I even living up, you know, the, the faith that I claim that I'm proclaiming? Am I even doing, you know, the things that God has already entrusted me correctly? Like I felt unworthy because of convictions of not me in my own eyes, not being, per you know, perfect or even close to it, you know? So just my struggles made me feel, you know, this conviction that was followed by this feeling of unworthy to talk and stuff. And, you know, God has really showed me through this year, because it's been a year when I first said, like, I'm not right now. I don't think this is for me right now. And, you know, that's really the enemy holding me down, holding me back, you know, and that conviction, you know, conviction is good. But now I can look back and see how God wanted to bring me freedom and prepare me for, you know, I mean, not that, not that, not that he needs to prepare me. He's just going to use me as soon as I give him my yes and amen. He's going to do his thing because it's going to be him working through me. But, you know, it all started with me saying not, I can't right now because of feeling this conviction, but conviction is good. We just got to learn to see, to see what God says, you know, and the word says that conviction leads to repentance and, you know, so that's, that's it. Um, mm -hmm. And then I also, uh, what stood out was um, there's growth in community. And mm -hmm. what came to my mind is there's also blessing because, you know, in sharing, uh, in having a community of fellow believers, you can share about these convictions. You can share about these things that the enemy attacks us with. And we are able to pray for one another, encourage one another. And also sometimes, you know, God gives us a word every time we go into our Bible. And sometimes it's meant for someone else. You know, sometimes you feel like, okay, that's kind of, okay, that's good. That's good. But like, it, I don't think it's for me at this time, but sometimes God gives us something for those whom we're doing life with. So that's the blessing that God is wanting to use us to, you know, encourage one another and, and for one another and towards love and good deeds. Um, but we, we won't get that. We won't get that growth and that blessing if we are, you know, isolated, if we are keeping our struggles to ourselves 
if we are keeping these thoughts the enemy puts in our mind, thinking it's just me, like I'm just unworthy. Um, so I really, really love that you, you said mm -hmm. those things because I, I look back and I see how those are things that, you know, God has, there's been so much growth and blessing in and freedom. And I just, um, you said like, uh, think of what, what is the reason behind me stepping out and doing this? And I think, you know, more than anything, um, saying yes to the Lord, because he's the one that's calling, you know, it's not that pastor Stella saw that I'm like, you know, not that I proved myself to her and she said, Oh, she'd be great. You know, it's the Lord that put me in her mind to, you know, to speak and stuff. And it's him who is calling us to things. And I just want to, I'm just like, since learning how to study the Bible and, and how to, you know, see the Lord speak to me personally, I'm just like, that's the secret sauce that everybody has got to know it. And, you know, but I wasn't ready to be the one to share it. I was, I was cheering everyone else. And so now it's like, okay, Lord, I, you know, use me. I will be your instrument after all. I mean, he used Paul. He said, when he sent uh, the one guy to go see Paul because uh, he was blind in that one home, the guy's like, whoa, do you know who that man is? Like he persecute, persecutes Christians. And he's like, yeah, he's, I've chosen that man. And so, you know, if God chosen, you know, people like that, you know, we just have to trust and, and yes. believe that he wants to choose us too. So yeah, thank you for sharing this message. Mm -hmm. It's so great. Thank you for sharing, yeah. Perla exciting exciting to have you out there tomorrow on the on the spanish call and listen god will always call god will always call right he whether you answer or not right and um and the the call is eternal right it's an eternal call where um he's looking for an eternal yes to an e eternal call right and it will and they'll it's always progress god will always use it whether you said yes a year ago or yes today, right? God would have used you a year ago and he would use you today, you know, because he's God. <laughs> Nothing is too big for him. Our 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 stubbornness, <laughs> our time of like, I'm not ready, God. He's like, yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. But, you know, he loves us. He loves everything about us. He loves that, you know, that well, when we make those er those areas and or we th think those things about us, he still loves us. He's still going to use us. He's going to still call. He will keep calling. And, um, you know, is there some people that 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 get promoted quickly, too quick sometimes? Yeah, there's there is some and, and we can miss it. We can miss it. You know, we're like, hey, I feel that God is calling this. And but um, it's a different agenda. It's a different heart position. Right. So. I believe I saw it a year ago with you, Perla, and I saw that, that God was going to use you, you know, and your heart position is beautiful. You're, you're a, you're a servant. You've always been a servant. You always thought about other people and that servant heart that you have is what God is going to keep blessing. Right. So I'm glad that you answered the call. <laughs> I'm glad that you picked up the phone and that you said, yes, um, it, he, it's, it, he's going to do ma mighty things through you. Go ahead, Sister Sass. I see you. Oh, I, yes. You're very good at this. <laughs> I didn't even raise my hand. Hi. <laughs> Thank you so much for this amazing message on the elements of true leadership. Um, it resonated a whole lot with me when I think, especially Gwen's story, that was just an, a mighty testimony of how important it is for humility, right? Mm. You yeah. know, in order to really advance, right? According to God's standards. I think I used to struggle a bit with that, but what then I realized was that, okay, it's not about the people, you know, that they're promoting me. It's not, they're not promoting me. God is promoting me. Right. And one of the, you know, key requirements for his promotion is humility, right? So with humility, um, servanthood gets easy. It gets easier because you are coming from a place of, if I do this particular task, if somebody asks me this particular task, I'm lower than, you know, someone else. You're doing it from that humble posture, that humble heart condition where I will do anything and I'm willing to um, do something to um, bring more people, you know, under my leadership and so forth, right? So they can see, okay, if I can do X and Y, Z tasks that they do daily, 
then, you know, they would be more willing to, so, you know, come under my leadership, you know, in what a job, you know, and, and so forth. And you get the, you get, uh, you know, um, the help and whatever that you need to be successful. So I think that's really, um, it's just from how you look at it. When you start looking at it from, you know, listen, we're already victors here, you know. If somebody tells us to clean the toilet that does not lower you in any way according to God's standards, actually, that's an elevation <laughs> according uh -huh. to God. Because, you know, when you can just, you know, just forget about yourself uh, for a moment and focus on really what the objective is, right? That's when he sees and he, you know, he applauds and he's pleased with that. And then that's where the promotion, you know, the promotion comes from. But it's a perspective thing. But once you dial into the, to the right perspective, um, it gets, it definitely gets easier. At least that's what happened with me. So, um, Amen. That's so good. Um, humility, right? That's what it comes down to. Yeah. In in your in your agenda, right? Our humbleness, our humbleness. That's why you got to get on your knees and pray. Get on your face and go and submit to you know to the throne. You know, um, it's so true. I saw a, a TikTok today where they had, I think it was TikTok, I don't know, one of these reels, and they came up to people and they had um, money in one hand and they had a, a, a paper that said God on the other hand. And so everybody grabbed the money, grabbed the money, grabbed the money, grabbed the money, right? And the person that, the, the last person looked at the word, the paper that said God and grabbed the, the paper that said God, right? And when he walked away, money fell out of the paper that said God, a lot more money, right? And I, I, it's such a good um, illustration of, you know, you think you're, you, you think that you're, you're um, having to seek and strive and only have the best, right? But when you just seek him and you don't have an agenda of, of what am I going to get out of it? God, I just need you. Then he provides, <laughs> you know, he, he blesses you. He blessed you in that, the, the cleaning of the toilets. He blessed you in those moments where you're like, Hey, I, I got to be humble and face this and do deal with this and let people say this about me or, or take a, a, a hit in my, my pay or take a, you know, um, lost a job or, you know, got a cut in my, my, um, my, whatever it is, you know, when you see that God is the one in control, you're going to be blessed anyway. Right. But it's, how are you going to handle it? How will you face it as a leader? How will you face the issue in adversity, right? So that God still gets the glory, right? And when God gets the glory, you're still going to be blessed. He's so amazing, you guys. Oh, he's so good. Amen. Amen. Any final thoughts? Anybody else have something to share? Thank you guys for sharing. Beautiful. No other ones. Anybody have any prayer requests? We will go into prayer requests. And we'll pray each other out. I will ask prayer request. I'm going to invite uh, a couple of very special people to join the Spanish call tomorrow because they only know Spanish. And um, just praying that, that it would be a blessing to them, that the Lord would use that and uh, just awaken their hearts to his goodness and that they would be able to understand how wide and deep and true is his love for us, that we don't really truly have to do anything to deserve it. It's just all by his grace. And so, yes, please uh, pray for, for those people that I'm going to invite to join the call. Amen. Please. Yes, we will. Also, we will. Also, please, also, please pray that, that the Lord would calm all the voices that might come against me or anything like that, because, um, I, I know that this is a big step in faith that I'm taking. And, and I know that the enemy comes just as hard, but uh, greater is he who is within us and he's just in the world. But please pray. That's right. That's right. That's right. We, um, oh my goodness, the, the spiritual warfare that goes behind something like this when you're teaching, the enemy's plan is to stop you in any way that he can to get on here and speak. We've had like, technology shut down we've had crazy noise we've had people who are manifesting get on here like crazy things but you you push through and you let god get the glory right and um that's just, especially for encounter kids encounter is coming up and that's what's 
<laughs> well, that's, that's why we're fasting and praying right now because we know the enemy is already behind the scenes trying to create distractions, right? But nope, God gets all the glory. So it's going to be wonderful tomorrow. Soul saved. Um, I right. wanted to ask for prayer for my son. Yes. Um, yesterday he said he wasn't feeling good. So he went to um, urgent care and he hasn't messaged me back today. So um, just pray that he's okay. And well, I know he's okay, um, <laughs> but you know, that he, he gets the healing that he needs. Thank okay. you. Yes, we'll pray for him. For a date and husband. Okay. All right. Anybody else? Prayer request? Okay. All right. I'm going to go and just round us out since we're at 316 right now. So you can all just join me in prayer. All right. Father God, we just, we thank you, Lord, for your presence. We thank you, Father, for, Lord, your goodness. Holy are you, God. You are mighty. You are wonderful. Thank you, Jesus, for your hand on this call, for your hand over our lives. Thank you, Father, for um, for surrounding us. Thank you for sending your angels forth. Thank you, Father, for your presence, God. I thank you, Jesus, that you are so good. You're so good to us, God, that you give us grace when we make mistakes. You give us grace and love. We love you, Jesus. Lord, I pray right now just for um, all the families on the call right now, all the families represented on this call. I pray, God, that you would cover them, God. Cover them all, Lord. Every household, every window, every door, every bed, every blanket and pillow, God. I just pray that your presence is there. I pray, God, that your presence will shift the atmosphere of whatever is in their homes. I pray right now, Lord, um, that you just give them all peace. Peace, Lord, God. I pray for financial peace over their homes. I pray, God, for promotions. I pray, Lord, I ask you, Father God, for provision in their homes. I pray, Lord, for opportunities, God, to present uh, to them, Lord. Lord, I just ask you, Father God, for restoration in families. Lord, whatever they're asking you in this hour, God, I just pray, God, that you would just um, hear their prayers, that you would bless the land that they're walking on, God, that you would bless their homes, that you would restore and heal the way that you own the only way that you can do it, God. We love you, Jesus. Lord, we lift up Perla to you right now, God, as she gets ready for this call, her first time speaking on the Spanish call, God, I just pray right now, Lord, um, that you would just give her the strength, the wisdom. I pray, Lord, for uh, supernatural wisdom. I pray, God, that you would give her the words to speak. God, that she would just lay everything down at your feet, God. And that she would let you move in. You do what you do, God. We pray for the families that are going to be on that call tomorrow. We pray, Lord, that um, that you would move mountains for them to be there. We come against any distractions or anything that would try to stop them from being on that call. And we believe in heaven, Lord God. We believe in you, God, that you will um, rain down your presence over them. That they would feel your presence. That they would be touched, Lord God. We are believing for their salvation. We are believing for um, them coming back to you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We praise you, God. I pray I pray right now, God, that you would just make everything happen the way it's supposed to happen. Have your way. Have your way, Lord. Your will be done. Thank you, Jesus. We lift up Jessica, Lord, and we just pray that you would um, just protect our family, God. We pray that you would protect her children, Lord, her marriage. We pray, Lord, for that court date that she's about to get on, God, that you would just, uh, Lord, you're the way maker, God. So we believe you, Jesus. We thank you, God. I pray that you would just move mountains for her, move things around, God, that, that favors you, God. Lord, it's your will, God. We thank you, Jesus, and we thank you for their marriage. I pray that you would just continue drawing near, that her husband would draw near to you. I pray, Lord, for a shaking in that household, Lord God, for a Holy Spirit shaking in that house, that they would feel your presence and that they would run. We love you, Jesus. Lord, we lift up Marguerite's son, God, to you. We pray, God, that um, wherever he's at, Lord, right, wherever he's at, we pray healing in his body. We pray peace. We pray restoration of any organ in his body, any blood cell, any muscle, anything, Lord God, that's hurting his body right now. We, we are believing for healing 
And I just pray right now, wherever he's at, that he's in a safe place, that he's protected, that he's surrounded by your, by your presence, by your angels, God. Bring him home, Father God, whole. Let him hear you, Lord. Let him have a, a desire for you, God. Thank you, Father, for the seeds that Marguerite has planted and what she's doing right now for the kingdom. We love you, Jesus, and we praise you and we honor you. And it's in your mighty and precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Ooh, just feel the peace of Jesus right now. Thank you, Jesus. He's so good. All right. Well, I love you, ladies. Have a great rest of your day. If you speak Spanish, um, get on the call tomorrow with, with our sister Perla. She is speaking for the first time. She is debuting tomorrow. Holy Spirit fire on that call. She is a Holy Spirit led gal. And I'm excited for her to get on there and, and, and share the word of God and share the gospel. So if you speak Spanish or you know, have any family members that do send them to that, that link, same link as ours. And um, it's going to be beautiful. God bless you guys. Yes. God bless you. We will see you guys um, tomorrow or Thursday. Much love. God bless. Love you. Much guys. love. Love you all. Bye. Bye. God bless.